Hi, I'm Nick Bonner. This is Lawrence Schultz. We're here at TCIA 2019. We're on the micro rigging lab, which is a small, uh, it's a little bigger than we've had it in the past, but it's a model tree that we can configure and reuse the limbs on to look at different rigging and climbing scenarios. Lawrence, you're a fanner man. You're the Schultz effect guy. You're kind of like one of the grandfathers of like modern SRT. You're also like, uh, like, a, does like an early time. leader in, no, in the YouTube in the generation, public, no. like, in oh, the YouTube God. generation of arborists. I remember, you know, when I was a field guy, watching videos, talking to you on forums, chatting. I mean, it's so cool, right? It's so cool, and you're you're here, you're teaching. Uh, so, I mean, I feel super lucky. I know the people that are watching do, but uh, it's important that we recognize that you've been doing these videos and this instructional stuff, um, and taking time and effort to to do all this for. You know, as long as anyone, Reg, you know, August, I mean. Yeah, well, those are heavy hitters. I'm flattered you'd include Bixler, my name with Bixler. those names. Bixler, how you doing? Yeah, we have to mention Brian. And, and Nick has helped me a lot along the way too. Um, and you have in all kinds of ways. And tree stuff has helped me a lot along the way. And so what we're gonna look at here, uh, and this is what I deal with on a daily. They, they ask me, what do you wanna talk about climbing wise? And what do you wanna talk about rigging wise? I'm like, well, I'll talk about the whole thing. Cause this is what happens on the daily. I'm a full-time contract climber now, and so I get scheduled to do a job, and I get minimal information, and I just have to load up all the gear and get ready to do all of it. So I'll get a text like, big removal tomorrow, it's near the house, and I could ask for additional details, but there's only so much they're gonna be able to tell me via text or pictures or whatever it is. So I'm just gonna bring most of my gear, or enough gear, for what I think might be some of the worst case scenarios I'm gonna run into. And yeah, we got a scenario here. We got big limbs over the house. I don't own a GRCS myself. I've got a Hobbs device, which I'll get for, for lifting things. I usually ask a couple questions to try and figure out, but like, well, do you think we need to lift anything? You can't rely on necessarily the person you're going to work for to know that you might want to do something. So it's on you to bring that gear. I look at this tree, I just popped out of my car, and the first thing I'm looking at is like, okay, I'm gonna have to do some serious rigging here, which means I'm gonna have to set redirects and I'm gonna have to build a system in order to swing these limbs away from our fragile target right here. How am I gonna do that? Okay, what do I got to work with here? I got a lead out this way, I got a lead out this way, okay? I'd like to put some point out here. I'd like to point another point out here. I'd like to put something to bring the tail end of that back into compression, because uh, as I'm sure has been beaten into your heads, wherever the rope goes, you're starting to change the force as soon as you're starting to change the angle. So we're gonna try and work with the structure we have to reinforce this as much as we possibly can so we can take efficient, sizable pieces and be able to make the cuts where we wanna make them and have our pivot points where we like them. So let's talk about access. Some trees, some removals, I'll just start flip lining up with my climbing line, alternating where I'm climbing, putting my climbing line on my lanyard and, and whatnot. And that's usually for stuff that I think I'm gonna be able to cut stuff on my way up. This case right here looks like I I'm gonna to wanna to get to the top, I'm gonna to wanna to set the rigging and then rappel down to these situations, which probably means I'm gonna set up an SRT system. Generally, I kind of tend to double rope removals just because you're moving your tie in so many times. I don't favor, you definitely should never be basal anchoring and SRTing removals unless you're basaling into a different tree or basaling from another tree because you don't want that added cut hazard, especially with gear flopping all over the place and pieces. Bad idea, a lot of, lots of tangles can happen. You can do a canopy anchor and that's probably what I do here. I shoot a line up wherever I can get it. I, Generally, when I'm attacking something of this size and this technicality, I'm not gonna mess around all day trying to get the perfect shot. I'm gonna get a shot somewhere, rope walk up to there, get to the trunk, spur in, and then start, I'd probably set up a double rope system at this point. So I'm looking at my gear. I brought a bunch of pulleys and ropes. I'm gonna probably, I tend to favor these dead eye slings a little bit more because um, that's just a personal preference. I, I find that I can do a lot with them and they're a little more versatile for me, for what I like to do. So probably take, probably take these three. On my rope walk up, I'm gonna take 
I'm gonna take my lowering line that I have here that I probably brought, because I usually bring my, that's another, that's a little fine side note point for anybody contract climbing or working for other people. If you have your own gear, then you know what it's been through. If you're working with somebody else's gear, it is a good idea to inspect it. I've had things go wrong because I didn't fully inspect other people's gear and it wasn't in the best condition for what we wanted to do. Don't want to find yourself in a situation like that. On the way up, I'm gonna set this somewhere on the trunk, somewhere that makes sense. And this is just gonna, what it's gonna do is bring, bring the rigging line out of the way. And it's also gonna help if it even fits and it doesn't. <laughs> a little bit longer. We got a little bit longer of a sling. Okay. So that one's through there. Taylor line through here. Now I'm going up to my point up top. Okay, somewhere back out here. Gonna do a redirect out here somewhere. Not too high, not too close. Stepping on things. Nice long line. This is a really long sling. So maybe we just Finish that off with half hitches. <laughs> Tuck that tail somewhere back here. Just get it out of the way. So here goes that one. And now, now I'm gonna make my way out there as far as I can feasibly go. This would actually be easier if I were spurring this mini model right here. Now you probably can't see over there, but I'm setting the block up same way I set that one up. So immediately I got this, and what I wanna do is I wanna avoid doing a lot of ups and downs. I wanna avoid climbing out here and then having to go back over here and doing all this stuff. So now that I have this point set over here, I'm gonna deal with everything over here, which means first one to go, I'd like to take this one, but this, just because of the slight angle here is gonna bring this in the way of this. So I am gonna have to do an up and down. So, because of its proximity to the house, I can't have it come off brush heavy. So we gotta avoid that. I also don't want it to come off too violently butt heavy. So I'm going somewhere with sort of a mid tie. I think that's close to what the balance point of this, oh, that's just hanging out there. What this might be. We're gonna go over here. And I got my groundy on the porty here. You don't need to, I'm just gonna lock this one off. Just gonna lock this one off. And the reason I don't want this to move is because we're so close to the house here, I don't want any run. I've designed a system here, so if you look at some of the angles we got going on, there's a pointing thing here. So this angle right here, when this pulley sees the load and this limb sees the load, there's gonna be a little pull this way, there's gonna be a little pull this way, but ultimately, where that pulley is gonna to wanna to move is right in the middle of that. So it is going directly into compression with this limb right here, so this is very strong. And this is very nice to bring this pulley, to bring that angle in just that much more, bring it perfectly into compression. This also barely's it down nicely into my lowering device. And then we come over here, and same thing with this one. Now this one's not quite as perfectly in the compression. This one's down a little bit, but it's still okay. I think it's still a favorable angle and much better than going up and straight down, or maybe right from here to like a lowering device, or even like back over here. We're still, we're still at a decent angle, and if you look up uh, some of the charts that show you, and if you actually measured that angle, you could figure out about what percentage of this weight that's gonna see. You don't really have a protractor in the tree, so you're doing these guesstimations. So what we're gonna do is limit that movement, which is gonna make sure that peak force stays down. Movement equals dynamic, which equals more higher peak forces. So we're getting this thing nice and tight. Where's my butt line? And this is just for added control. This is just to make sure this thing 
doesn't move. And you're also sharing some of the weight of this piece with this butt line so that this doesn't see the entirety of this weight. It's between both points. So you're, you're taking it easy on your rigging gear too. I've got this second rope that I'm gonna put here. And then we'll put our little notch in here. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Couldn't get an electric saw. Do a little half hitch, because this is strangely smooth wood. Strangely smooth square wood. I like that nice and slug, so it's like a very short distance, so it doesn't have far to travel. This kind of operation too is simple for the ground crew. The ground crew doesn't have to do much here. It's just like, hey, everybody hold all the ropes tight. I don't want this to move very much anyway. So now let's cut it. So that's all I moved. And in reality, I probably would have had that guy hold it kind of tighter than that. I didn't really have anybody on that line. That butt might actually stay on there after I cut it. I'll have to go off kick it off or something like that. So now he's gonna slowly let this out. And now we got a pretty big piece hanging like this. I tend to favor some sort of a device. I mean, I'm sure you guys see me use like a mini porter wrap. If you got somebody else down there using something where they're going to like a different lowering device, maybe I got an X-ring or a pulley or something. I would usually have it on a dead eye sling. A pulley's nice too. Anyway, I like to pop, I like to be able to pop, you can't open these. I like to be able to pop that off to turn that into a tagline. So now, who's ever dealing with this on the ground? Now the ground staff, some of them can be lowering, some of them can be directing, pulling this wherever they wanna pull it. Maybe they got a cart or something they wanna stick under there, or this is going directly somewhere else. One piece down. Okay, so now we're over here. I got a little bit more air clearance, which is nice. I also have my point kind of to the side and kind of behind me. And that's gonna be important for where I'm gonna be for the position to make this cut. I do have air clearance, but I still don't, I still kind of don't want this to come down brush heavy. I'm gonna want them to hold it tight too. So I'm gonna probably select the point that's just past the midway point because I tend to I tend to think that if you have a if you have a piece and even if you can let it come off brush heavy if you're not looking for this thing to run because that you could run it a little bit but you're going to have to stop it that's more weight and more momentum doing this before you actually stop it I don't have any actual numbers to prove this I mean, I don't I'm not a scientist but from what I've noticed in tree behavior and the way things go that is more weight to stop and decelerate, or that's more, not more weight, it's more force generated by that sort of dynamic movement. So I'll favor something that keeps it a little bit more balanced so it actually doesn't move and it just sort of pivots while part of its weight is still on the hinge. So now I come over here, where are we putting this? I would probably guess that to be the balance point I'm gonna go maybe just past that. Also, I would use a spider leg if I had one, but we don't have one, because let's let's just say I didn't think to bring one, and that's the way it goes. You gotta work with what you got a lot of times, especially if you're rolling up to something and you didn't know what you'd be getting into that day anyway. So, I don't necessarily need it, but I already have it with me, and I'm a maniac like that. We're doing another butt line. It's gonna share the load between the two ropes, it's gonna help limit movement. All these things that I uh, have a borderline problem, obsessive compulsive disorder with. But I is who I is, and that's all I can be. You know what? I don't know why I'm even using a pulley. I'm gonna show you something it might be considered the dark arts. Yeah. 
Take natural wraps towards the crotch. Okay, so there that is. Ground cleaned up. Let's make our cut. Try to be out of the way of our rope. Didn't put it in the port. Right? Where's my ground guy? <laughs> it's, li it's live, baby. But luckily, I had my butt line on it. <laughs> so we're clear of the house anyway. What that should have looked like, what that would have looked like, had I not been all wrapped up in the butt line, have I not been all obsessed with the butt line, let me put it back to where it was. Add it around here. Can you hold that tight for me? So it comes off the cut, dips around, and now I can take this off for, for a guy on the ground to lower both into. You can start lowering. <laughs> a little more friction than we thought. And then you can take that off and do the same thing we were doing before, guide it to where we want it to go. Pull that, pull that line to keep it clear of the house as it comes off. Uh, land it safely over here. That was a fantastic blooper, by the way. <laughs> Still didn't hit the house, though. Still didn't hit the house.